Hi there, for today's video I'm going to show you how to configure site-to-site -site VPN between Palo Alto and Cisco ASA. This is going to be a route-based VPN, not policy-based VPN, and Ike version 1. Let's get started. So for this tutorial, I already configured the Cisco site as before, if you don't know how to, please go check this video for Ike version 1, site-to-site -site VPN, route-based VPN. We are now going to touch the Cisco side. We don't have anything in there to discuss. And I will show you how to configure things on the Palo side. This video is going to be useful for those of you who want to learn the other vendor or the other side of this situation. And of course, for troubleshooting as well. So. Let's log into Palo Alto. And yes, my password is admin. admin. Don't bug me with that. Um, gonna show you guys where to start. This is the main section that we will have to touch. I prefer to start with Ike phase one. So let's see what do we have in here. Show run crypto like version one policy or just that. This is my phase one policy. I can have many policies in here. I just have one and that's more than enough. So I'm going to configure the same thing on the Palo side. I'm going to go to Ike crypto. These are the default stuff. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to create my own. And I'm going to, I'm just going to call it site 04. Diffie Hellman group is 14. Authentication is SHA. Um, encryption is going to be 256. And eight hours. Let's just double check that 256 SHA. Yes. That is a policy that we need to create. So this is our phase one policy, even though our phase one is not done yet, then we will have to go to Ike Gateway in here. And in here, I'm going to say this is going to be Site04 Gateway. This is going to be Ike version one, like I said. Interface is going to be the 101, which is the external interface. And the IP address is going to be this one just select and the peer IP address is going to be the ASA side show interface IP brief just grab this guy and paste it in here pre-shared key is going to be Cisco Cisco and under the advanced option the most important thing is to change the default to site 04 and click on OK. So far, so good. So we created the phase one policy and the gateway. Just gonna commit it now. I can do it later. Doesn't make any difference. So now we will have to go to IPsec crypto. This is our phase two policy. So in here, I'm gonna call it again 04 something that stands out to me. The equivalent part on the Cisco SA is sure on crypto IPsec, which I have a transform set, AES, ESP protocol is ESP AES256 and ESP SHA HMAC 256 authentication. I'm just gonna say SHA1 group is gonna be 14 which is set right here and hours this is the lifetime which I've already set it to 3600 seconds equals to one hour and then I'm just gonna leave this as default we don't need to specify a size if however you specified it in here you should have also specify the cap size or the limit in here so the rotation of the keys and etc etc kicks in 
I'm going to click on OK. OK, so, so far I've configured three elements. And let's, by the way, take a look at the task. It's completed, no problems. Um, I configured phase one, phase two. Now I will have to configure the tunnel interface, which is here under this section, interfaces and tunnel. What's the equivalent part on Cisco SA? Sure, I'm interface tunnel 100. I already configured everything on the Cisco SA side. So um, just for your information, so this is the equivalent part for route-based VPN, of course. Um, this is the ASA side. I will have to just do the same thing, not exactly the same, just IP address, that's all. Um, gonna assign a different one. So I'm gonna create my tunnel interface in here. Gonna name this as 100. Always assign default as the virtual router. 99% of the cases that's valid and 1% of the cases is advanced. You're not going to touch it. Zone, I will dedicate a new zone. You can assign it to outside, but that's not what I recommend. Create a new zone. Simple. Uh, that's useful, and if you want to know the reason, that's useful when you want to assign a policy. So at least you get the hang of what's going on, what policy is going to the outside, to the internet, what policy is going to your let's say branch site, so site 4 stands out to you and it helps you figuring out who's who down there on the policies tab because this tab policies it's gonna go pretty wild so IPv4 you're gonna assign dot one in here slash 29 um, has to match this site of course 248 and this particular ASA is running HA, that is why you see a standby IP. I don't have HA yet on Palo Alto, and if I did, you don't need to specify additional IPs, but that's required for Cisco ASA. If you don't know how to configure HA, please go check this video, which I explained how to configure HA, ASDN and CLI both. So, advanced, I'm gonna assign an ICMP profile so I can ping the tunnel interface and this one looks good so we created the tunnel interface now we have to tie or glue things together so I'm gonna go to IPsec tunnels empty in here I'm gonna add one and name it as site 4 the tunnel interface is gonna be 100 I gateway is site 4 and IPsec profile is going to be site 4. Show advanced option. You do not need to do anything in here without this. Things going to work just fine. If you want to monitor the tunnel, that's where you should go to. Under the proxy, this is for policy based VPN. We are not going to touch that one as well. And in here, I'm just going to click on OK. So I'm going to click on commit. By the way, do you see that? This green status, that's not really um, reflecting the situation. Not sure why it's showing up as green. Normally it's, yeah, like I said, it should be red. For some reason it showed up as green. The correct status should be red until the negotiation is completed and, you know, tunnel is established so let's refresh that okay now the tunnel is online and this is something that I can trust right now it doesn't go immediately green it takes a while for the negotiation and the whole yada 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 completes phase one phase two etc etc so that we have the tunnel let's check on the ASA side showing a face IP brief tunnel is up the first test I want to do is to ping 10.10.10.1, which I can ping the tunnel interface in here. That looks good to me. Let's go and check the guy right here. Show this is this host on this side. Now I want to be able to ping from side 3 this PC 
to this guy. So, is it possible? Definitely no, because we are still missing a very important piece. Equivalent part on Cisco SA is this, show run route. Show run route. We are missing a route. I'm pointing 1048 slash 16 to this guy, the VTI or the tunnel interface on Palo, but on the Palo side, I don't have that. So I need to go to the routing part and configure it. So I'm going to add a route and say this is site 4. Destination is going to be 10.1.100.0 slash 24. Interface is going to be tunnel 100. And the IP address uh, is fine. You're going to say 10.10.10.3, which is the tunnel interface on Cisco ASA is the next hop. I'm going to click on OK, click on OK, click on Commit, and Commit. Do you think it works? No. Again, no. Because we are still missing the policy. We don't have a policy, so the firewall is going to drop the traffic. So we're going to need to add a policy, and the way to do that is to go in here under the Policy section and click on Add. But before we do that, let's just create the object. Let's do it the civilized way. So I'm going to say my remote subnet is this. Site 04. Copy, paste. And I'm going to click on OK. So I'm going to go to policy and say, this is my branch. Why depart from the standard? Site 04 outbound. Source is going to be my inside. Um, source address is going to be the HR subnet, our example subnet. Destination is going to be site 04. That's how you differentiate. And destination address is going to be site 04. Application can be anything, I'll just leave it as any. And the action has to be allow. Okay, so my outbound traffic is now set. I'm going to commit it. Go to this guy right here and ping 10. That one, the 100, the 100, which is this PC. So let's try it. And I can reach that PC fine. So from the PC that we just mentioned, show. So this is our PC on site 4. Can we get to 1048 and 128 uh, 100? No, of course not. And there's a reason to that. Traffic on Palo Alto is allowed to depart from our inside to the other side. But is it allowed to come from the other side to the inside? No. You don't want to, you know, allow things from here and expect the same to be allowed from the other side to your side. So if you want to, you can create that rule. If you trust the other guy, you say site 04, now inbound, source address, I can, sorry, source zone. That's where the traffic is coming from, from the VPN. And we just call it site 04. Source address is going to be site 04. In our case, this is going to be synchronous, exactly the opposite of what we configured for outbound, but it could be different. Could be that there is another department that wants to get to your site. So just don't blindly add things and add the opposite because you think it should be both ways. Sometimes traffic needs to be allowed only from one side to the other, not from the opposite. So destination. In this example, I'm doing this because I want to show you how to do things for inbound. But just choose the one that is applicable to your scenario. So. Destination, sorry, it's not site 4, destination is inside because we want to allow traffic from site 4 to our 
inside network. Destination address, let's say they want to access the HR subnet for whatever reason. And then the action is going to be allowed. So our rule is ready. I'm going to commit it. And momentarily, we're going to try to ping this. Let's wait for this guy to finish. Let's try that. Doesn't work. Beautiful. Wrong IP address. OK, it's working. Very good. So now we have established route-based site-to-site VPN between Palo Alto and Cisco ASA. There isn't much that I can show you around. This is pretty simple in Palo Alto. You go to the GUI and you see the status as green and you know things are working just fine. If for whatever reason your rules are not working, go check the monitor tab. In here, I can't show it to you because this appliance doesn't have the license. So in case you run into problem and you have proper license, in here you can search for possible reasons that why traffic is not passing through. Maybe it's getting blocked, maybe it's not configured correctly, there's no match, or whatever reason that is, you can see it in here. On the Cisco side, like I said, there is a video already for that, so go check that one. And as always, I hope this video has been useful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and turn on the notification for this channel. In the other words, support this channel. And by the way, in case you have suggestions, what do you exactly want? I'm gonna record the video, but it's gonna take some time. I saw a comment, someone commented MPLS, not sure what MPLS, what part of MPLS you guys want. Sometimes it gets delayed because I will have to work on this lab and complete it so I can record more videos. Anyways, uh, let me get down from my soapbox and I think that's pretty much all for today. Have a good one.